Welcome to this painting tutorial. How's it going everyone? Welcome to this video. In this video we're going to look at how to paint a renegade guard militia enforcer. This model is made to look as if it is an escaped prisoner from a prison world. And of course the model is from Forge World. This is an easy model to paint. It has few colors and it looks very good and I hope you enjoy this video. If you like it don't forget to like, comment and all that good stuff. I'm going to prime the model in white this time, that's because I want a very light base for uh, basing the orange. The orange colors don't really typically cover too well, so I'm starting with a white base. And I'm going to use Jokero Orange as a base coat to all of the uh, uniform. As always, make sure that the color is thinned down a little bit with water. And uh, I'm using two coats. Uh, one coat is enough to make a good coat over white. But just to make sure and to not miss any spots, I'm giving it uh, two coats. This is not a very bright orange, this is a more uh, muted down orange uh, to look like cloth instead of uh, some uh, fire dragon or something like that. Then I'm going to base coat the skin with Bugman's Glow. Um, you can use it uh, in any part of the model that is skin. In this case it's just the hand, so it's not very much. So this is a very quick step for me. I'm basing it at the same time as I do the orange because I'm going to wash them both with the same wash, which is uh, a Rayclan flesh shade. Uh, the flesh shade has a really reddish brown color that it uh, looks very good on the on the orange and on the skin as well. So I'm just uh, going to wash this all over the orange suit and the skin. Once that's dry. I'm going to go ahead and use uh, model color black and with this I'm going to block all of the places that are going to be black and silver. I went for black as a contrast for uh, the, the orange, it's going to be very monochromatic. This color scheme is just uh, var variations of orange, uh, blacks and grays I guess because uh, the silver is uh, gray uh, metallic. And uh, I'm blocking all these uh, parts that are going to be silver and black. Uh, you don't have to cover the silver if you don't want to, but uh, typically the silver covers uh, way better over black than white. So that's why I'm doing it. Then I'm going to use dried bark. And with this color I'm going to coloring uh, all of the leather bits of the armor and the, the whip as well. Um, the glove and the belt on the model is pretty much everything that it has on this miniature. Because I don't want to take away from the orange color, that's why I'm using only variations of orange. Uh, brown is just orange with black. Uh, the brass on the skull is just uh, an orangey metallic. And that's why it doesn't have a lot of contrast and it lets that orange uh, pop a little bit more and look a little bit more like a prisoner. And that's what I'm aiming for. Here I'm using Balthazar Gold for the skull uh, as a base coat for a brassy uh, skull that she's gonna be wearing. Of course you can change the colors if you if you like, uh, you can do a metallic uh, silver skull or j you can paint it bone if you like. It all depends on you but I'm doing it this way and if you like it you can just copy it. Next I'm going to use lead belcher to base coat all of the places that are going to be silver. Which is pretty much all the backpack and, uh, and the arm, the weapons and all of the spiky uh, bits are on the whip. This is a pretty easy step on the places that are a little bit more uh, obscured on the edges of the backpack you can use a detail brush just to get into all those uh, little crevices but for the most part uh, this is easy Once it's done I'm going to wash all of these new places with Agrax Earthshade this includes just the metallic, the, the silver, uh, the brass and the brown that's pretty much it and it's a pretty easy step just as we did with the uh, with the uh, uniform just make sure to avoid those areas that we already finished
Once it's done, you can leave your model like that and it looks pretty good, but I'm going to go ahead and continue highlighting. I'm going to start with Jokero Orange again and just uh, pretty much just picking all the raised parts on the, the model. It's going to look a little bit uh, lighter because uh, the wash uh, toned it down a little bit more towards red and we're going to bring it back up to uh, bright orange, bright muted orange pretty much. And we're just uh, picking up all of the places that are raised from the and folded form from the uniform just to give it a highlight. And then we're going to use an edge highlight with the Bestigor Flesh only on the very uh, sharpest edges and places that are more protruding around the folds. Just a little line here and there just to accentuate the highlight and make it pop a little bit more. This is really going to make the uniform stand out and I would really recommend you to do this. Although it's a little bit more time consuming, not that much, but it'll make the, the model uh, pop a little bit more from a close distance. Once that's done, the uniform is done. I'm going to highlight the skin with Kadeon Flesh Tone and this is just uh, aiming at the whole surface of the skin. If you have more skin than just the hand, uh, just leave the recesses on the previous color. And then kiss the flesh on the most highest places of the skin. In this case it's just the knuckles and sharpest places around the fingers and stuff like that. Once that's done, I'm going to highlight the black with edge in gray to start. And I'm going to edge highlight this place into the vest and the boots. I'm just going to pick up the places that are reflecting the light from my light source as best as I can. And this, that's pretty much it. Next, I'm going to use downstone to give an extreme highlight to these places. Uh, concentrating on the very edges, on the sharpest edges of the best and on the most reflective parts of the boots. I've said many times that I like to use uh, drying retarders for uh, edge highlighting. Just make sure to look for a, a liquid drying retarder and use a little bit of that to extend the life of your paint. You can find it on different brands, liquid techs. Right now I'm using an airbrush drying retarder. Next I'm going to use Scrack Brown to highlight the uh, brown. I'm not really going to highlight the, the whip, I'm going to leave it as it is. Uh, but I'm going to pick up all of the edges on the gloves and on the belt, just to make them uh, stand out a little bit more. After that I'm going to use Death Claw Brown. Death Claw Brown looks very good on dark browns uh, if you use it as an extreme highlight. But you need you need a, a previous uh, highlight uh, before that just to make it look uh, a little bit like a glow or like a, a transition, uh, not by itself. Next, uh, Rune Fang Steel, I'm going to use it to highlight all of the silver. Uh, it's pretty much just uh, picking up the places uh, on the details and uh, uh, painting some scratches here and there on the vest. And on the uh, weapon and the backpack, I'm just going to quickly dry brush it very, very lightly because I want to keep that brownish tone uh, to make the weapons look old and thorn and weathered and and in bad shape, pretty much. Okay, next I'm going to use Game Color Bright Bronze. Uh, you can use Secret X Bronze, I believe that's the JW equivalent. Uh, but this paint is new and it looks pretty good, so I'm using this. If you manage to find it, it's a beautiful color. I recommend it very much, I like it a lot. And uh, with this, I'm just uh, picking up the highest places on the skull and uh, all of the edges and leaving a little bit of the washed color behind. And that's pretty much it. This is the finished model. I really enjoyed painting this model. It looks beautiful. Uh, Forge World does very nice miniatures for Renegade Guard and I would really consider getting some of those for my Chaos Army to use as cultists. Uh, they look pretty good. 
And the color scheme is simple and very uh, monochromatic as I said and uh, very effective in my opinion. The model really does look like an escape prisoner and that's what I was shooting for and I'm pretty happy with the way it turned out. So thank you very much for watching, I hope you found this tutorial entertaining and helpful. And if you liked this video don't forget to like, comment and subscribe, that really helps my channel out a lot. Become a patron if you can and thank you very much for watching, I hope to see you on the next video. You stayed. Great. Thank you very much for watching my video and if you would like to further support my channel you can become my Patreon on Patreon. You can pledge as little as a dollar a month and you are helping me create more and better content. If you can't, that's fine because you're helping my channel a lot just for watching and sharing. But you can read all of the details if you follow the link in the description below. I hope you can spare a dollar to make this hobby of mine a job for which I can get paid. Thanks for watching and I hope to see you on the next video.